Jesse Garage. Today, I'm going to start down the path of actually doing a fender delete. Now, it's it's a sad day in that my Dean Speed Sissy Bar is going to be removed. I love this thing. Um, this is actually the first Mythosaur um, one that he made. I've seen some since then, which is a little disappointing, but, you know, I get it. Um, these are really cool. So I've got to remove that. I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to try to do everything in a manner that I can reverse it if I wanted to later. If I wanted to sell the bike, which I probably never will, or if I uh, just wanted to go back to a fender. So let's get started. I'll set the camera up closer to the bike so you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some parts on. Um, I'm be using parts from Tank Machine and Combustion Industries to do this. Um, so let's get started. All right, we've got two bolts down here underneath this seat. I mean, uh, my seat is the 1920 solo seat. So if you've got a different seat, it might be easier. Some of them just lift right off. Some of them have connection points back here. Um, this one, this process is going to be the 1920 solo seat. So just two bolts under here. And that comes off. There's a little clip under the front of it. And then the two bolts go right here. So set that aside with the bolts so you don't lose them. Next, we're going to take the brace off, which is right here. And this is four bolts. This is again a six millimeter. Six millimeter for these, six millimeter for these. So got the same tool in your hand. Now, important to note, these have two different sizes. The front ones are shorter, the back ones are longer. And hold on to this aluminum piece when you're taking the bolts out because you don't want it to slip and hit your fender. All right, set that aside. And then you've got another six millimeter for this bolt here in the front. We're taking this cover off. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing next. washer on this one as well don't lose that and then again these different size bolts longer one in the front um, and then two smaller button head looking ones in the back set those bolts aside and then lift the tank up a little bit and this just tucks under it so this is the standard block off plate for the bobber you can get these I think fairly easily off the website. Um, the one that we need, you can't get really easily off the website. Um, so I'll leave part numbers in the description of what all this stuff is, the ones I'm taking off and the ones I'm putting back on. All right, now to remove these here, they're also six millimeter. Loosen them up for now. Because these four bolts Hold a lot of stuff on. So the trick here is to take this off and while you're holding it. So if you've got a second set of hands, that'd be useful now. See everything's loosening up now. All right, so at this point, when I take these bolts out, the sissy bar is going to be loose as well as these side braces. So we're going to have some things that could possibly go bump. So, a couple bumps. All right. So 
these are the spacers that came with my sissy bar. If you don't have a Dean Speed sissy bar, you won't have those. All right, so now just kind of lay these down carefully so you don't scratch anything. And then your the sheet metal on your fender is loose and you can take that and put it somewhere safe. So next we want to remove the turn signals from these braces. And there's some clips in here that are holding the wire. There, so now we can lay it out a little bit. So this is going to be a five millimeter bolt right here. Hopefully you can see. You just want to break that loose. Set this somewhere. There's a couple more six millimeters under here that are going to hold the license plate frame to the subframe. So let's get that off as well. Going back to my six millimeter and they're under here. All right, so holding the subframe on there is four uh, 15 millimeter hex bolts. Okay, got one broken loose. Two broken loose. And that bitch was on there. I think that's broken loose. There it goes. Okay. On this side, the turn signal and plate light are hooked up. So I'm going to, if you can see that, use a pick tool and try to disconnect those so I can get that out of the way. There you go. So now I can set this stuff aside and see if I can get to them on this side as well. Yep, there's that. Those are free and out of the way. And now to the subframe down here. So this bolt was a pain in the ass. I didn't have a tool that could was small enough to fit down there. It, it's just a six millimeter hex, uh, but I didn't have anything small enough. So improvised, what I did was I took a little bit from a cheesy, chinky little um, tool set. This happens to be a, I think a T40 uh, bit that fits into the six millimeter. So I didn't have anything that would go around there that would be a ratchet. I didn't want to have to like, you know, work too hard, you know, so you got to work smarter, not harder. So I found, uh, I believe this is an E10 ratchet and it would fit over the end of that bit and then I could just back it out that way. But even at that, I had no, like very little um, range of motion. So it took forever, but it's out. Um, and the subframe is free. So now I can just take this out. Then here's the subframe. What we're going to do now is we're going to start putting parts back on. And I'm going to start with the tank machine block off plate that is this part here it's a very heavy piece of aluminum um, I know there's a couple other companies that are now starting to make these but this is the tank machine one so so here's the bracket that comes with the block off plate with the top battery cover um, and I'll show you that in a second this bracket comes with it that's gonna go here lining up with this hole and then we're going to attach this with a bolt that comes with the tank machine block off plate. This is a four millimeter Allen head. So one thing I've noticed, this has a little bit of uh, play in it. It's got a oblong hole. So I'm going to have to mess with it a little bit to find out if you want 
this bracket at the bottom or the top of the oblong hole. I'm going to put it at the bottom for now, just thinking that may cinch the battery cover down tighter to this. That's just the thought. Um, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to flip it over and we're going to put the screws that came with it in here and put those where those 15 millimeter nuts were or bolts. So these come with the tank machine block off plate and these are going to be six millimeter. So I'm going to put these down here. Um, you can't see where I'm pointing. It's going to go right here. What we're going to do is we're going to tuck these bigger plugs kind of down behind it because there's room behind this little void behind the battery box. So if I do that, then I should be able to force the plate back on um, and then just smush it all up and tighten it. So that's what we're going to try now. Let's see if that works. So that's starting to work, it looks like. Um, what I want to do is I want to make enough room to where I can get the wires here. So I'm going to have to route them through that block off plate on the top. Um, so I need to make enough room that I could lay that flat and this one's starting to get these in here. All right, so I'll tighten these down again. What you want to do this is what I'm trying to do. Make it sure I can get this tucked up under the tank and get it sitting here enough where I can put the bolts through to block it all off. So let me get the block off plate torqued down. All right, so I got the block off plate here. The top plate's on. Um, right now I'm just trying to get all the electronics sorted so I know where everything's going to go before I put the whole thing back together again. One of the things I'm going to reuse is the license plate light. So in order to get this off, we took it off the subframe earlier. It's the, uh, there was two six millimeters, I think on the bottom side of this, this plastic guard was over it, protecting the wire. I took a straight screwdriver and just pried under it and it's held on these little plastic things here. So uh, don't worry about messing them up because they'll, they'll actually go back in if I wanted to. But now I've got this wire. I can start to fish out through the hole here. Maybe, there we go. All right, and now I need to unscrew this. This is an eight millimeter. So I'm going to remove these. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to take the bolt off here at the end because that's holding this whole tube on. That's going to allow me to get the, the wire all the way out. So, okay. So I got that piece off. It's just the screw at the end that I showed you guys goes through here, pull that off and then you can get the wire all the way out. We'll set that aside because I'm going to reuse that. All right. With this out, this is what we're trying to get the light. Uh, I'm going to put it on my Combustion Industries license plate bracket. 
So push this through here. Make sure it's facing the right way. And it actually tucks right under there real nicely. Um, so this is a nice piece of equipment right here. He did a really good job on this. All right, so I'm gonna put these two bolts on the other side here. I'll show you back. What it looks like. Just turn right on. And then there's the light. So, turn it back a second. So what I'm doing here, I'm just trying to find all the parts and make sure that we can drive fit this thing so it, uh, it works all well. So what I've got is, I put this, it's just, it's all loose, it's right here. Uh, this is my plate bracket. It's gonna be right here, hanging on the support for the anti toy solo seat. And a couple things, one, I've got, uh, as I showed you earlier, I've got the, the license plate light mounted to it. That looks fine. Um, logistically, show what I'm working with here. Logistically, I'm going to be having to get the turn signals and everything, all the wiring, all the electronic parts on this bracket before I actually hang it. And to add the complication, I'm also going to have to have these wires for left, right turn signal, as well as the license plate light under here and already tucking up into this before I button it all up. Uh, what I've done is I'm going to have to, when I put this back together again, have this is the part that closes off the top of the battery. It's going to be right here. I need the wires to run through here, so I've got to essentially run the wires through here before I put it all back together again. So setting that there, I'm going to plug this in. All right, so I've got license plate light, I've got tail lights. Turn signals, hazard lights, and then brake lights. So that's uh, looking pretty good. So all the electronics is done, which is good. I'm going to put the bolt through here and fasten this uh, turn signal up. And then I will show you the steps of tucking all this crap in here, trying to finish it off. Okay, now to try to tuck all this stuff up under here. I'm gonna get as much of the wire as we can underneath here. Because it gives us less to have to fuss around with when we get it all together. So lift up the tank, slide this underneath it. And then we need to try to get these lined up as best we can. Start these bolts. So I'm going to get these bolts on and then show you how we do the rest of the seat. Okay, we are just doing a matter of reversing everything we did before. So want to get these wires out of the way as best we can. And then mount this part. Again, remember these 
Short bolts go in the front. Long bolts go in the back. Um, I'll get this on here. And what I'm going to do is hang this here with a couple bolts. And that gives us our plate and our turn signals. The seat's going to sit back on top of it. Um, I'm going to put this all back together again because you guys have seen it come apart. So you know how it goes back together again from here. Uh, the only addition is these two bolts here. So I've got to find these in a toolbox to get two bolts that match. And then we will be done. I'll join you back when I get it all done. All right, so everything went back together again. It looks good. Um, it is a bobbed bobber now. Now fender delete is finished. Everything's working. Lights are on, turn signals. I might make a few adjustments, let it ride for a little bit and see how I like it. Uh, a couple things to point out. One, Combustion Industries does an awesome job. This thing is really cool. Um, even down to the gentle curve of the license plate bracket, which makes your license plate uh, curve around like that. It's just a nice touch, um, like how he allows you to utilize the stock wiring and the stock light illumination. That's pretty cool. So it looks good from the back. So there it is, finished project. And I got some writing time in today. So like and subscribe if there's any questions, leave them below uh, in the comments. So uh, one sad thing, these are all the parts I took off. That one really hurts, I love that sissy bar. So as I was uh, mourning the removal of that sissy bar, I got a mystery package from Dean Speed and I'll put a link up here when I get that video done so you guys can see what that is in that box. Hint, hint, Dean Speed and I uh, am missing a sissy bar now. So um, yeah, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go. Click on some other videos, but go home. <laughs>